Welcome back to another off-season powered by the University of the Bahamas, Go Mangos, and 10-Year Seniors Podcast. We're here to bring you dynamic conversations between coaches, student-athletes, and student alumni to find out what they are doing during this COVID-19 lockdown. This is a transformational show. We hope that you enjoy it. And remember, Go Mangos. So, Senator Jennifer Isaac, if you ever wanted a mouthful, this is it. So, Miss Jenny for the day, right? She has gone through a path of coming from a very athletic family. Her father played tennis. She learned tennis. She can play all sports, including those that I don't see in the P system, like hoop ball and air hockey. No, street hockey. No, field hockey. Field hockey. And field hockey is a thing. <laughs> Y'all didn't know that. Y'all didn't know field hockey was a thing. You know now. It was. Ah. Back then. Mm-hmm. She goes into nursing. And at the time, if we could take a pause back in the nursing. So were you involved in any local leagues at that time? Nursing? I was still playing when I was in nursing. I still played volleyball. I still played softball. A little bit of basketball. Track was a little bit too demanding. So yes, my what, what are, two questions I have from that. Just piggybacking off that. The first is, you're short. <laughs> <laughs> you're short, and you keep saying you play basketball. <laughs> so um, I'm thinking small forward. And <laughs> small we, forward, guard. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, what was what was what was your strength as a basketball player? My strength. I was just aggressive. You're aggressive. <laughs> Rebound up. Aggressive in all aspects. We need to find this footage. There are little things in life that can make me laugh. That is one. I just want, like, imagine that. Like, Senator just, ah! And then, like, everybody just, okay. <laughs> like, and, and then you mentioned softball, of course. I, 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 can, mm-hmm. I know you're good at softball. Uh, Mom talks about it all the time. And volleyball is happening at this time. Mm-hmm. Is this, and, and there's a key point in history that everybody tells me about you, that you are very instrumental in the starting of what we know now as the New Providence Volleyball Association. Yes, um, you know, I, like I, I started playing volleyball when I was actually in high school, um, um, R and Bailey, because by then a lot of the coaches used to come to the schools to recruit players. So softball and volleyball in particular, even field hockey and netball, I started playing when I was in high school, and really I grew up with a lot of people who are older than me, and you know you have. Of course, Cora Hepburn, you have, of course, Margaret Aubrey, who were older than I was. Mm-hmm. But and when I started playing volleyball, they were the persons who... For the record, I, I didn't know they was older than you. Most for the record, for the record, I didn't... I, shout outs to Miss Cora. I did not know... <laughs> I did not know you were older than Senator. Just a couple of years, not much. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't getting in that. I ain't getting in that. Because I, I think she left close to me. I <laughs> so, you... You're pursuing education and sports. And I think this is one of the lessons we want students to listen to this mm-hmm. for. How were you able to balance your pursuit of both? Well, I think because I had a good family support system. Um, and of course, you know, the coaches and things back then were very helpful at the time. And of course, people that you played with. So it was more like when you played on a volleyball team and a softball team, it was like a family. You know, when you mm-hmm. played with Rothmans and Mary and mm-hmm. Edgecombe and all of those people, Bernie Curry, Heisen, Farrington, those kinds of people. You, you, you develop, I tell people, relationships through sports that last you a lifetime. And that's, to me, what it is about. And I always say to people, that is what my life is built on, building relationships. So through slow pitch, fast pitch, so- softball, through... Um, volleyball, through field hockey, through netball, you've just been able to establish relationships that continue even today, even though I don't actively play sports anymore. Okay. Yeah. I want to just put on record, this is the 10th time she's mentioned, field hockey. We have the... Were you that good at it? I feel like there's a certain level of pride that you have for field hockey. Well, you know, I was on the national team for all of those sports, okay. basically for softball, volleyball, field hockey, netball, we would have traveled. Quite extensively, actually, the first time I made the Bahamas netball team was in '76 when we traveled to Barbados to play. <laughs> and how did it turn out? Oreo Wood was on that team. Flo Roll was on that team. And trust me, um, we were demolished because <laughs> the Caribbean was so far ahead of us. Because mm-hmm. you know we focused more on American sports and focusing on sports in the Caribbean, like mm-hmm. field hockey and cricket and all that. And cricket, right? And so. We, you know, it, it was a learning curve for us. <laughs> That's honest. And, and again, you mentioned just, just in the them again, how, how, how it sounds like almost all the national teams. It almost sounds like you said you were a part of 
all the national teams. Is that is yeah, that for those sports specifically, volleyball, softball, field hockey, netball. Nothing for basketball. No, 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 no. Uh, so too short, sure, too short. Sure. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so what are these people doing? Like nobody could have fit y'all. You know what it is. <laughs> so we we get a great history lesson, and and as we tell this tale, uh, in my mind, we're not even reaching to the coaching body yet. We're still developing the art league and the student art league. Um, and then of course, yeah, you were married, right. but at this time, was there love involved? I, I shout outs to Coach Wilson. He mentioned how he was seventeen, going off to college, and married. <laughs> Actually, I met my husband when I was away in okay. college in North Carolina, and I was out here. So you came back with an education degree and a man. And a husband. <laughs> and a man. I'm back with a husband. Okay. So, and I, I think, of course, you know, we have a lot of student athletes. Some are fathers. Right. Yeah, of course. No, that's the world we're living in. And, and to get that kind of, of encouragement to understand that it's not the end of the road is a great thing. Yeah, but so, when I went off to college, I was a mother already. I already had my son. It was quite an experience. You know, my mom, like I said, because of the family support that I had, my mother, he, he came to North Carolina at one point but didn't like it, so he wanted to come back home. Um, so he came back home to my mom, and my mom took care of him while I was in college. Excellent. That's a lot. How, how was, again, no question about this one, but how was that, being a mother and pursuing your education? Well, I came home was it whenever I had breaks and stuff, but... Of course, you know, you talk to them. It wasn't no WhatsApp and all them things then. <laughs> you have to be making long distance Put, put your quarter in, talk to the operator, <laughs> confirm the voice. Yes, it's me, y'all. Hang up. Don't, don't, don't hang up. Accept the call. But this is this is good. And, and the time period we're talking about is like the early 70s. No, sorry. This is like the late 80s. 80s. Yeah. So good, yeah. at this point is where the foundation of the New Providence uh, Volleyball Association is what happened. Yeah. And the, the names that you, you're naming off. So I'm curious now, when was it that you took on the mantle of leading our volleyball team at the COB? When was that? Early 90s. Early 90s. Mm-hmm. And taking on the team that you had back then, and I saw in pictures that Coach Power was your assistant. Was right. she always your assistant? Not initially, but later she came on. Later yes. she came on. So tell us about how it was coaching back then at what we would call, I guess, the genesis of volleyball mm-hmm. in the Bahamas. How was it taking on a set of young ladies who had to keep their grades up and also the discipline to bring pride to the institution? Well, you know, it, it wasn't difficult because it wouldn't have been the first time that I've been coaching um, persons at that age because I had already coached a national team at the junior level. So co- transitioning to coaching at the college level was quite easy. Mm-hmm. Um, I had already had some experience because um, remember by that time I would already gone back to school to do a master's degree and come back. And so it was quite interesting. Um, the education degree was in, is it a master's in education? No, uh-uh, it's a bachelor's in health and physical education. I went back and graduated in 2002 with a master's oh. degree in physical education. <laughs> so again, we have this, now we have three parts going. Mm-hmm. This family matter, um, family focused individual, you know, this proud person who has the athletic blood. We have the education. I, I don't want to say you're a nerd. It sounds like you had the gifting, but you're just naturally smart. But you ventured from healthcare to education and physical education as well. Mm-hmm. Three areas, and now you're in law. Uh, <laughs> and now we're talking about a multifaceted athlete who I think you're doing a thing Coach Wilson told us. Some people need to retire and coach. So, of course, you're talented. I heard even up until your latter years, it's like you still was cutting people up. But I, I'm curious of one, what, what was in your mind when you made the decision to find a coach? And secondly, who would you say you emulated? Or who did you think of while you was a coach and kind of stole pieces of that style? Well, I guess you kind of create your own style. Um, back then, you would have had coaches like Timmy Barrett. You would have also more, you know, you know like I said, corridors were always... The older players always mentored us, of course, as well. And so they were the key ones that stuck out in our mind. Edric Poitier, of course, is one of them. Um, he coached us. Joey Demerit is another person. Of course, later on, he would have Raymond Wilson. He would have Joe Smith, all of them coming up. So there were quite a number of persons that influenced your life. Um, Leslie Russia Cartwright was one of them as well. Okay. He was instrumental because he was actually at one point president of the Providence Volleyball Association when we first started our junior league which I was instrumental in ensuring that that happened because I was in the high school at the time. Mm-hmm. And so we started a junior league that really fed into 
volleyball and so teams didn't have to go to the pink of play as they were able I'm, I'm still i'm still players. curious like when did the switch happen when did you start wanting to be a player and wanted to become a coach that that happened <laughs> what probably in 2000 2000 yeah it wasn't i just stopped playing sports because i ruptured my achilles and, okay and most of the time so injury yeah so Our injury yeah. as a retire because her greatness couldn't be stopped <laughs> so you're now at that, that mantle, you're coaching, and, and now give us, I guess, a comparison. Knowing the first team that probably played for the university and what you see now, how do you feel the program has grown? I still think that there's more work that can be done in volleyball. I think the girls need more exposure um, mm -hmm. to travel some more and to play teams perhaps of a higher caliber. Um, I think you'll be asked to seriously look at what their definition of a student athlete is. Um, I guess with perhaps when by the time it's dorms come and they can move into a dorm, it is quite a different life living on campus than yeah. being able to go home and come back as a student athlete. That is important. You know, coming out to practices, taking part in that kind of stuff. And you really form a bond with your teammates. And for volleyball, that is important because it's a team sport. Mm -hmm. And so that that is something that is critical I think to develop in the athletes, particularly females, you know, they have to learn to get along with each other in order to play with each other and to communicate with each other. That is important. And, and she talks about the time, but I'm thinking as you speak of the photos I see on our, our Facebook page of, you know, uh, Jenny, I'm just calling out no disrespect to titles, ladies, just a long name. Y'all stay with me. <laughs> um, but Jenny was literally coaching at an early stage. You guys were hyped. The ladies were enthusiastic. And to my surprise, I apologize to all carrots and mingos, I heard you guys were winning. Yeah, we won and we've, um, we are actually every year, I think we made the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Every year in the New Providence Volleyball Association, which was an accomplishment for the team that I had. A lot of the players I knew because persons like Akia, a lot of them were education majors and stuff who would have come out. Um, so we had a pretty good team. We had, um, what was it, Kanisha? Um, I think, yeah, Kanisha. Uh, she's now a teacher. She's on the island. Okay. Um, Akia Rose, who used to play. Um, we have quite a bit of them. Crystal Delancey. We've had a number of players who have done very, very well. Um, gone on to various professions now. And then some of them themselves are now coaching. That is true. Yeah. I, I imagine, as you say this too, there was a point, of course, you were not coaching anymore. I think it was Coach uh, Cora. She, she had taken over his head. Right. And there was a point you were on the bench like this, looking at the team because um it's sad, but a few years we were on like a losing streak. You yeah. know? So I remember one time I was looking at you doing the game and you were like <laughs> like and and it's, that's why I asked this question. It's about, hard to separate yourself even though you may not have been coaching at the time. And because you know I think a lot of times the the players don't have that confidence in themselves that we or the, or realize their own talent and, and as a coach trying to draw that talent out for them to understand that you're just great you know like I always say to some of them if I had your height and the things that you have mm -hmm. I would have been playing professional volleyball <laughs> if you understand so and so a lot of them just don't realize the talent that they have and a lot of times too they don't have that drive and that heart I think is what what you have to understand um when you're playing a sport, you have to feel a love for it. Mm -hmm. You have to want to win as well, and that's important. And that's where heart comes in. You know, like when we used to play um, with Jan, Mortimer, and Cora, and Margaret, them on the volleyball court, we say simply we can sacrifice our bodies. Wow. <laughs> that's how serious you used to take that. When we used to travel on national teams, you know, you go to Barbados and you play in a championship game in a gym with over 5,000 people, you can't even hear yourself on the court. You know, these these are the kinds of things that we did and we went, because what happened was the year before when they first had the Caribbean Volleyball Championships, we hosted it in Nassau and Barbados beat us in Nassau to win the championship. Uh, and then the Is that the one where, um I think, no, not I yet. I remember Coach Wilson mentioning him like that. Yeah. But he's like, they robbed us. That Was that one? Well, I don't think they robbed us. We, uh, we just won. We, and then the next year we went to Barbados and we made up our minds. We was going to beat them. At home, because they beat us at home. Did we, was, did we do that? that? Yes, we did. Okay. That was the kind of passion we had for the game. And okay. the, the love we had for the game was like, you know, but he coming in here to beat us. And even the teams that we played on together, that was the same passion we had. Um, we um, 
said, you know, ain't nobody coming here to beat us today. They used to call us the old girls who were still playing and winning. How y'all let these be on the sidelines? How y'all let these old girls beat y'all? They <laughs> still had that to this day. And even to this day, exactly. Mm -hmm. They keep challenging us to come back. <laughs> and let, these so, games with them. so that works beautifully into my last question. So if right now, just by happening, I know you had the injury, but God healed you. Uh, if <laughs> if the coaches were to come together right now, that's Coach Raymond, yourself, Coach Cora, maybe uh, Ronaldo, Cece, and let's say one other. I can't think of somebody. Mm -hmm. If you think the coaches came together right now and you guys played against six of the female volleyball team, who do you think would win? Us. <laughs> you heard it there first. Hell, on our season. They were cutting your hip. That's what she said. She said that. They said they could beat your challenge. Has been out there. We are going to raise money. This is the game of the century. Game of the years. Old versus new. Weak needs versus good needs. Exactly. But um, ladies and gentlemen, that was my final question. Um, but of course, at this time, we want to open it up for. I'll slide over here. So we'll open up the questions to the floor. Actually, no. I, I forgot a question from um. On direct the camera. So, what what do you think we need to do to improve the position of volleyball in this country? Young people from very very young. That is critical because if you don't, you will not have a, you know a feeder system into your league. Mm. Um, volleyball is people have to realize it's one of the most difficult sports to teach. It's not easy to teach volleyball because the actions are not normal. You don't put your hands together. And doing everyday things like basketball, you dribble stuff and all that. So volleyball is a very difficult skill to teach. And what I found in Barbados, what they do is actually they use their best volleyball players to teach volleyball in the school system. Um, and they hire them to teach, you know, because wow. that's how important volleyball is to them. A lot of my friends who are in Barbados who are on the national team teach. And that is what they do. So we have to start teaching it from a, a much younger age. We have to start teaching more from so, kindergarten. So while we, while we continue to talk, ladies and gentlemen, please drop your questions. We're in the question and answer period. Let me, what time is it? We'll make sure I don't, hope I didn't jump in that. No, we got, no, I got to ask more questions. But yeah, we're taking questions at this time. Um, any questions that you may have that you want to ask, um, to the screen so I can read it. Um, oh, Director Kimberly Rose said no. She would go with the current Volleyball players to win. And <laughs> Good. right after that, we had the daughter of Cora, Olivia, <laughs> saying that that is Fox. <laughs> you know, um, when we coming back on campus, uh, who is that? Foreign Links? I'm not too sure who it is by name. But somebody's asking that. Um, I, I can't say for sure we're in a phase process of opening on campus. Yeah. I know at this time we, we still don't allow any students on campus. Um, so we are waiting for questions from you, our audience, as we continue this interview. Again, we have the great Senator Jennifer Isaac Dotson. <sighs> Much words. Okay, drop and, one of them uh, names. <laughs> and, I thank, and I thank her for sharing, I would say, integral parts of a story from motherhood to nursing to education to physical education. And now, now is when we say congratulations. Our alumni... LLB. You know where, ladies and gentlemen, I want y'all to know. Y'all know Rent the team when he got to. You know where it was to be doing, you know, we do the graphics for right. graduation. And I saw Jennifer Isaac Dawson. And <laughs> when I saw that, I go on to my boss, shout out to the OUR team. I went to my boss, Kenny Sun, and said, is this a mistake? Because I don't even know when you had time to go to school. You're, <laughs> you're still teaching. You're a senator. You still has come out to volleyball games. When did, how did you balance pursuing a law degree? <laughs> Uh, you just learn to balance. There's a lot of time management. You just have to manage your time, you know. Sometimes there's a lot of sleepless nights. <laughs> um, but I did it part-time, so that made a difference. So they had, oh, this started a while ago. Yeah, I did it five years ago. It took oh, us five wow. years to finish this, years. De this degree. They just invented the BA, well, the LLB two years ago, eh? Uh, no, actually, the LLB was here from, it was under UE. And okay. UB took over, UB spoke. Oh, and then you yeah, just continued, over. right. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Um, if anybody doesn't see the common sense in the story, obviously she's running for prime minister one day. <laughs> really? Honestly. Imagine that, you know? <laughs> if it happened, who said it up? Brent, thank you. But um, we have a lot of experience here. We want to borrow some of this experience. So, ladies and gentlemen, I see Libby here. I see our director role. Please ask your questions. I may have asked your questions already. I'm sorry. 
Uh, I had a, I had a script in my head, and I, I touch every did I touch I touch every part. I hope so. Oh, you hope so. <laughs> uh, crowd. Let's talk about the crowd. So at our games now, because one we have the athletes supported, and two, you know, there's a little more spirit. Mm -hmm. You see a lot more students coming out the games. Right. Um, how how does that make you feel? And back then, when you guys were playing, were the crowds the same level? No, we didn't have a lot of persons coming out. I think it's getting better now, and there's more support for the sport, which is good. Um, all right, cool. Just making sure I don't disconnect. Well, we got a first question. Um, what would be your recommendation with regards to training facilities in the country? The training facilities? We actually have the national training. Ah, anyway. <laughs> uh, I guess, yeah. So, a volleyball? Are you... Yeah, so what would be a recommendation of a training facility for, I guess, volleyball in the country? Well, I think it would be good if you had a national training center for volleyball, where persons, you know, where you could actually train persons in volleyball, where national teams could have access to a gymnasium instead of having to fight with basketball and to beg for a national gymnasium, those kinds of things, uh, you know, critical. But again, the country has to make a decision whether we want to invest in sports. And mm -hmm. I think we don't realize how important sports is. I tell people, people always say how I get where I am today. And I said, the reason I had the fortitude to do the things that I did was because of sports. Because sports taught me so much from I was in school mm -hmm. to where I am now that you never depart from. It teaches discipline. you discipline. Yeah. Exactly. And that's important. And I think sports is the deterrent to crime. If we were to do more sports programs, we would have less crime in that's, this country. That's actually one of the things I say all the time. time I see the beaches envy. It's like, yeah. we have crime because they're not encouraging the young children. After school, yeah. After instead school, of a yeah. PE assignment, go to watch a sport game with your mom and your dad. And then, of course, with shift workers, it allows more time for the family. And I yeah. feel like if more families came up, and saw the level of excitement of volleyball, yeah. they would understand. But if you involve more kids in playing sports as well, they would then learn that discipline that they need to. I have a question from that, but I'm going to ask this next question. I know you guys have put in a lot already, but those names you called at, um, at a lot of experience, how can you guys as a group help with volleyball at its early stages? Well, you know, if we're asked to assist, um, me and Cora, Margaret, no, I think everybody's willing to assist, you know, who's here in Nassau, Brenda Work. There's quite a number of us who played volleyball together for years. You know, we're quite willing if they have a program. I know Jason was doing something on Saturdays at Donald Davis. So, and me and Cora at one point had also started doing something with some young ladies um, from Yellow Elder Primary. And I know that one of them went on, she started playing in the league. Mm -hmm. So we've done our part in, 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 in doing development and we're quite prepared to still continue to give our time because someone put the time into us. That's good. Um, we have a comment. So Jenny, let's do that research on the impact of crime in sports. You're asking master's degree carrier, nurse, <laughs> politician, senator, lawyer to be. Senator Jenny, nurse, registered nurse, thoughts. It's a long, like it's so much stuff. I can imagine writing your name on a piece of paper just to be respectful. Now introducing senator, master's degree holder. <laughs> like, like, how do you do that? But um, congratulations. I even think um, what you're showing as especially a strong woman in our society, the, the, the need to pursue all of your educational pursuits and still stay home in sports, I think that's very encouraging. Yeah. Um, that shows a lot of leadership. And like I said, every episode... Everybody talks about you. I just be like, let's switch next topic. Like, I only gotta run on, man. But um, I I had a I had a piggyback question from some you said earlier because mm -hmm. I don't see any more questions. Face the question. And, oh, we got a next one. What is your most memorable experience as a member of the national team? <laughs> My most memorable experience was when we beat Barbados and yeah. Barbados. <laughs> Vengeance is ours. Vengeance. It is was ours. that was. We, we thoroughly enjoyed after that fact. <laughs> I don't think we slept that entire night. Was it like y'all stayed up just thinking about what to do and play? I wouldn't tell you what we stayed up and did, but we did I stay up. <laughs> you heard it here first. We stayed up partying. <laughs> Another off the record. Um, <laughs> and then when we, by the time we got home, it was time to go to the airport to catch a flight. Uh, but y'all won. That's but we won. That was the most important thing. And we celebrated in grand style. <laughs> I, I think a lot of people don't talk about that, but of course, being in sports, I realize how essential it is to celebrate. 
Yeah. I think even when I first started, um, we, we used to throw after parties for the basketball team. But that's what you don't see with teams today. Like, we still go to the gym to watch volleyball. And after we used to play volleyball, we would go outside. Even if, depend, not doesn't matter who won or lose, both teams would go outside. We'd sit outside and talk and have some drinks and, and just socialize. Today, they don't do that. You know? And that was how, like I said, you develop friendships. And that's how Jackie Conyers and all of us you know, Mary Edgecombe, all of us are still friends even today. Even because of those bonds. Well, because of those bonds, yeah. Uh, most memorable experience as a coach? Most memorable experience as a coach? Wow. <laughs> I guess it was winning. Um, I try to remember who we beat that was really, really, really phenomenal. You beat um, Melinda? You beat Melinda team before? Did we beat them? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we had shout outs to um, Rico. Rico was talking about when she blocked Melinda twice in the game. She's like, hoo, hoo, don't touch me. Like, she was pumped. She's like, don't talk, don't touch me. Oh, Kia did something like that too. Kia yeah. Rose, she did that one time. And she was so hyped when she was able to block one of those top spikers. I was like, uh, you go, girl. You always had it in you. That's crazy. <laughs> so, uh, most memorable experience. Who was the team you beat? Was it, it wasn't technicians. Um, who was the next team after? After them. I don't even remember, but we 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 beat a couple of the top teams. Mm -hmm. If if I I think this is the question I'm thinking of. If you think your players would describe your coaching, what three words would they say? <laughs> you really want me to say yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, no no words. We have children in the audience. To go but um, we got we got time for more questions, ladies and gentlemen. You say that I'm a very aggressive coach. Very aggressive. Very aggressive. What else? I, I tend to carry on really bad. <laughs> So your first argument because is it's, it's, it's because um, I get into the game to that level and so I tend to say some things that I probably shouldn't say <laughs> when they were all used to that. So um, is that is that true? Three words. Now we got to laugh by some people with the three words. So our first word is aggressive. Uh, Jenny would be described as aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, give us the two words and then you got two questions for you. Two other words. Two other words? Yeah. Mm. Oh, actually, let's, let's cover the questions. I'll give you time to think about okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Who are your top all-time volleyball team? Oh, sorry, sorry. Who is your all-time top volleyball team and why those persons? Oh, my Lord. My top volleyball team <laughs> would be Cora, Margaret, John Mortimer, uh, Eunice Roll. Um, I'm trying to think of Siobhan Moxie, uh, myself, Nancy, Shelly, who else? Give us I, I, I want to work you a little hard. Give me positions. <laughs> Give me positions. Okay, set it up. If I, I, I want everybody to visualize the court. So tell me the person and tell me what you would, what position you would, you would oh, I remember the question with the now. But tell me what position they would have. And you didn't say yourself on the scene. That's I did. Oh, you did? Me and Nancy okay. would play set up. All right. um, probably with Esther, the card writer, if she would come back. Okay. <laughs> Shelly, um, Cora, well, Cora would Margaret power? would play power, oh, but Margaret. Cora could also play offset. Okay. Um, Eunice and John and Tasha and Bristol would play middle. Um, and offset, I would have Siobhan, like I say, Cora as well. And who else? Charlene Fox. They, they, that, that would be about it. If, if this team was there and you've had a lot of coaches you've seen, who would you want to coach you? Who would I want to coach you? <laughs> oh, that's a tough question. Got it. <laughs> three times in that episode. Got it three times. I think um, Leslie Russia Cartwright was also a good coach. I always tell people the first time I went out to national team practice with Leslie, only thing he had me doing against the wall was flicking a ball. I flicked the ball for the entire practice. Wow. How, how did that make you feel? I was like, well, when I can get to go on the court, <laughs> you understand me? But he, 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 he made sure I learned the art of setting by flicking against that wall while Corridor was played. I had to flick against the wall. You know, eventually I got integrated into the practice, but it taught was me. It, was it like those karate moments where like wash, like wash on, exactly, wash off, exactly. and then later on when you get on the court, you're like, oh, that's why you... Exactly. Oh. Then you begin to understand why it's done. Okay. And so, yeah. That... We have uh, another question. What would you recommend for coaches, today's coaches? 
Well, I think today's coaches need certification. That's important um, to get certification, not just, we don't do a whole lot locally, but of course the International Volleyball Federation does level one, level two, level three in coaching. I'm certified at level one and two, but I'm not certified at level three. Um, I think, I, I'm trying to figure out if Russia is. I think Russia is probably the only person who is. Um, but I did my certification in England. So you just have to kind of stay in contact with the Bahamas Volleyball Federation to find out when they're offering courses and be prepared to go there and get some sponsors and things to be able to go away and do it because the Federation may not have the money to do it. That's serious. But, you know, they do some local certification sometimes as well, the Bahamas Volleyball Federation. So whenever that opportunity comes about to also do it. that, take it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to ask, um, this is my question. I don't see any questions. If I skip your question, please let me know. Um, we had a question on Coach Raymond uh, Wilson session where they mentioned how high school volleyball, what they teach in high school, don't prepare you for college and beyond. Yeah. So why is it with so much people who have gone through a program, who've had the influence of yourself, you know, why are they not just teaching what the kids need to know to really get a scholarship to go off and compete? Why still teach that basic, just set, bomb, let's just rotate? Why not teach people the positions? The problem with that is the, the length of time that you have to prepare teams in the school system is very little. Um, and volleyball is, like I said, is very difficult and complex to learn. Um, it takes consistent practice and you have to understand that the transfer of skills for them to learn volleyball skills has to happen almost daily. Mm -hmm. um, but then you have to balance that with the fact that they have schoolwork, they have all these other things going on as well. Um, but if they had a league like I said, a junior league, where they would be perhaps exposed to some other coaches who would have the opportunity to teach them probably on the, probably on the weekend. Mm -hmm. That may help in getting our volleyball skills back up to par. That's good. Um, we have a comment. Jenny, know the feeling of Martin Lundy made me do the same thing. I <laughs> shot on the wall on practice. That's from uh, Lenny Black, the Cambridge. Okay, boy, let me tell you that. And that I almost didn't go back. <laughs> it's like... Serious? I come to the national team practice and you get me flicking on the wall? <laughs> I, I guess that's, that's, I think an interesting question is, looking at coaches today, I mean, I can see a definite difference between yourself, between the cars, you know, that passion, that the Jasons. You know, even the coach Raymond, I mean, there's two sides of him. It's when he's quiet, and then he's like, come here! <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's two different sides of him, right? Uh, you know, uh, but the coach, the younger coaches you see coming up, the the uh, who who is coaching right now? Um, oh, Javon, yeah, no. like Javon, Javon and, yeah. uh, What do you think about their level? Do you see remnants of you guys, or do you feel they could do more? I still think it's more that we could do. Mm. I think it's it's a bit more that we can do, and then based on like I said, the things that are happening in the country today, I think. It's now time for the younger players in the league to also lend their expertise. To, to helping out the New Providence Volleyball Association. You know, um, like I said, someone needs to take the mantle and develop that junior program again that we had started. Right. Um, and, you know, working closely with the schools and the phys ed teachers in the schools for them to do mm -hmm. that program is we're, going to be important. We're coming up to our final question for IG Tell Us uh, Time Up. Uh, but again, this recording will be reposted on 10th Year Senior on the University of the Bahamas website, our YouTube page, and of course, our Facebook page. So tune in, you will hear it again. Uh, we have our final question, actually, from your assistant coach, Madam Cora. No, Heaven? Heaven. She's Heaven? Yeah. I disrespect her. I only know it's Cora. Sorry for that. Um, so I apologize. No disrespect. Uh, what can be done to get volleyball back to where it used to be with regards to crowd and competition? Our final question. I think. Um... They need to involve some of the older players and helping them with public relations and some of the other things that they do. Um, and I, like I said, in, in basically running the league, it's not that we want a position, but it's also good to get advice from players back then. Because back then, volleyball, the gym used to be crowded. You couldn't get in the gym. When, I, when TBS spikers played, um, the TBS softball team, baseball team, everybody came out to support us. Um, you know, and it was just like, wow. Is it because of television, maybe, and the internet? You think maybe people... That will have an influence, but I think, you know, and perhaps people who don't feel safe coming out to provide security and those kinds of things when you come out there. And there are different things that you have to do. So sometimes the older players can give some advice and suggestion 
to help the league, you know, we're not really involved at all or even asked our opinion about anything. You know, we may not want to actively coach or anymore or do anything, but sometimes it's still good to speak to us because we have good ideas. Yeah, like we're seeing right now. Yeah. And um, you mentioned two things that I think um, should be encouraging to the future, ladies and gentlemen, before we take your final remarks. And that's one, the National Training Agency. Of course, we know there's a convention center to be built by the old Clarence A. Building. Bilen, right. So that's going to be um, somewhat of a sporting arena. Well, I hope it is a sporting you know, arena. I, I hope, I've heard <laughs> that we're supposed to have a good stadium in there, something that could host good games. And um, if that comes to fruition, I believe... Uh, that would build, really, um, UB spirit, Yeah. which I think is critical to sports. And that would get crowds there, too, because then get you got to walk exactly. across the road right. versus and driving. It would build a spirit and camaraderie amongst the athletes as well that I think is important. Um, and, and then we have the building of the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> I, ladies and gentlemen, it has a thousand rooms. That's that's a hotel. I've been in the hotel industry. That's a hotel. Um, and, and I hope even whoever we have to lead it, you know, they understand that maintenance is key. Oh, yeah. You know, I've, I've spent six years in housekeeping. And one thing you know, anyway, people don't know. They ain't know. They ain't know. Anyway, but any final remarks? Uh, I know you didn't give us those two more adjectives, but before they end this call, any final remarks uh, to our audience? Uh, again, we have coaches. Uh, we have Coach Cora. We have Coach Raymond Wilson. We have CC. We have Libby. We have a lot of volleyball players in there. But any final word, words to the audience before we close? No, I just want to say to everybody, you can achieve anything that you can want to in life. Um, you know, I thought about going into law many years ago and didn't. And today I just started it here and it's never too late you're never too old never give up on your dream and follow it no matter how old you are because you can still achieve it and you can achieve anything in life that you set your mind to and particularly through sports because you have that discipline you have that love and all those things those qualities as an athlete that prepares you for anything that you want to achieve in life Thank you for tuning in today to another off-season. We want to encourage you to go to our social media pages and, of course, our YouTube page and subscribe if you want to see some of the live dialogue that happened in the past and, of course, today's episode. Thank you again and enjoy your day. Go Mangos.